kind of feel like telling the hummingbird story. All right. <laughs> um, okay. So that's why to teleport. Make it so, number one. <laughs> okay, hang on. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Because, 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 I must be in Kansas. Remember when Dorothy was like, oh, I, I'm, I don't think I'm in Kansas anymore. I think I just got teleported to Kansas. There's the, the yellow brick road. The yellow dirt road. <laughs> well, it's a pretty day, though. Anyway. Yeah, so... Nainukasi, it's that time of year when a when a hummingbird comes back. I remember when I was a little guy. Nimashomas, my grandpa. Uh when I was a little guy, like six years old, five, six years old. We lived down in a basement apartment of my grandparents' house. And my grandpa was one of these old time fishermen. Indians, you know, he was a boarding school Indian, so <laughs> he learned. If you if you're from my generation, you have a grandparent who grew up in a boarding school, the Indian boarding schools. You probably know those guys. The, the stereotype of an Indian boarding school is that those guys. It's kind of like the parents who or the dads who went to military school. Those they had such a regimented life. They had to get up really early in the mornings, make their beds, you know, make breakfast, uh, brush your teeth, shave, da da, put up the flag. <laughs> and my grandpa was the same way; he was an early riser. Get up before the sun. Well, I lived downstairs on a, and me and my brother we had bunk beds, and I had the up, the the top bunk, which was right underneath the kitchen. And so my grandpa would get up at like four in the morning. I could hear his foot, footprints up there, or his footsteps. I'd be like, I'm going to go up there and have some coffee with grandpa. And I'd go upstairs. And this is back in the days before, before people were all concerned about idiot proofing the world. Oh no, it might be harmful to the children. My grandpa saw his five-year-old grandson coming up the stairs. And he was like, oh, here he comes. I better get him a cup of coffee. <laughs> so he made me a cup of coffee, put a whole bunch of milk and sugar in there, and we'd sit by the window looking out at the lake. And my grandpa had a... So I started drinking coffee when I was like five, six, with my old... Nemeshomas, Nemeshomas, my grandpa. Nemeshomas is grandpa. But every spring, my grandpa would... would Dig out the old hummingbird feeders. Could hang hummingbird feeders on the, on the you know the edge of the roof there. The overhang. And it always had like this red hummingbird feeder fluid in it. Look, look good. Look like Kool Aid. And there was that one morning. He goes, you know, I can talk to the birds, and they listen to me. I got the power of the. I can speak to the animals. And I'm like, ah, get out of here, Gramp Grandpa. <laughs> you and your stories. is always trying to make me laugh. I'm like, get out of here. You, you can't do that. He goes, oh, really? Watch this. And he goes to hang up a hummingbird feeder. And he goes, come and eat, hummingbirds. And sure enough, this bird comes right around. He pauses for a second, looks at my grandpa, and then goes right to the feeder and starts feeding. And I was like, oh, uh, my grandpa really can speak to the birds. Then he went to feed the dog, and sure enough, <laughs> you could talk to the dogs, too. Like, come and eat, puppy. And that dog came. But my grandpa fed the hummingbirds, the Nenukasiwag. Now, here's a story about Nenukasi and the Gichi Ishkode. Hummingbird and a great fire you see back in the days of the grandfathers all the animals lived out in the woods and there was a great fire a gitchi ishkode 
and a fire started to burn down all the trees and it was burning there's a whole forest and, all, and it made all the animals run from the fire and stand at the edge of the river and there's the Makwa, the bear, Wawashigeshiwag, uh, whatever, deer, <laughs> um, Andeg, the crow, and all the animals stood there and watching their homes burn, they're crying around. The little Nenukasi, the little bird, he goes to the water and he picks up just a eye drop full of water, just on the teardrop of water. And he flies right into the flames, drops the water on the fire. And he goes back. And he grabs another little beak full of water. Into the flames, drops it, comes back. Back and forth, back and forth. This little Nenukasi. Well, well, Gosh is leaning against a tree there and he's looking at this bird flying back and forth. And Wagosh well, says, What are you even doing? That's not even going to help. And Nenukasi stopped for a second and he goes, I'm doing what I can. Back into the water, back into the fire, back and forth, back and forth. Well, get you Manadu, the great spirit. He hears that little bird. And he's just impressed. He's like, oh, wow. That little, brave little bird. He's doing what he can. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do what I can. And he started to make it rain. It rained and it rained. It was a downpour, and it put out that fire. And as all the animals watched the rain come down, save their lives, Kichimanadu says, Nenukasi, because of your courage, because you did the best you could, and even though it didn't, your efforts didn't matter, I stepped in because you were trying. I'm going to give you a little gift. Oh, I forgot to mention this. And back in the days of the grandfathers, Nenukasi wasn't super fast either. He was kind of like a chickadee. He could flutter around. He was fine, but he wasn't super fast. But because of that day, Gitchimanadu says, I'm going to give you a gift. Poof! And Nenukasi noticed his little wings suddenly could move super fast. Because once you were just a little bird doing the best he could. Now I have made you the greatest bird. You will now be the fastest bird of all the birds. You'll, you'll, your wings are going to move so fast, you're going to move like a bumblebee. and go up, down. You're going to hover just in the, in the wind. Not move forward, backwards. It's, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> and this is how the hummingbird, Nenu Kasi, got its amazing abilities. And we should remember that it doesn't matter how good we are at something. It matters that you're doing what you can. Maybe that's what I need to learn from that story. You know, Michael and Natasha and I, we're trying to do a show where we teach the Ojibwe language. And we share the culture and our stories. We try to make people laugh. Maybe learn how to count to ten in Ojibwe. I don't know. <laughs> and the reality is, get you a do. We could do this for another 10 years and people probably won't learn how to speak Ojibwe. But I'm going to do what I can. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And this is the story of Nenukasi Dush. Gitchi Ishkode, Hummingbird, and the Great Fire. Man, you guys talked all the way through my story. Birds are rude. <laughs> if you're going to beat it, fine, beat that way. I'm going to go home. You guys can sit and gossip for the rest of the day. I'm trying to teach the language and the culture. Yeah, good. just go on now, birds. <laughs> We're off to see Natasha. La 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 la. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Hi, sweetie. You ready to come home? 
Yep. Did you tell the story of Hummingbird and the Great Fire? I sure did. <laughs> okay. Well, hang on. I'm going to scan for your coordinates. All right. And that's one to teleport. Make it so, number one. <laughs> Get out of here. Sunny day, la di da di. Hey, baby doll. Hi. How are you? I'm okay. I've been kind of crabby in these last few days, but. You telling that story about Dummingbird and the Great Fire? Yeah. And that little comment he makes of, I'm doing what I can, even though the fox is like, it's not even gonna matter. Yeah. I kind of feel like those are the two voices in my head.